Why is it freaking freezing, but I still get myself iced coffee? Hey everyone, how's everyone doing today? I feel like I always sound so corny when I do that. I really am curious how you're doing today though. Anyways, I thought that I would make a video today um, only based on how I've been feeling lately because I think it's such a serious struggle for so many people and so many people are silent about it because, you know, we're like, I must be the only one feeling like this, right? Like nobody else distracted. It shouldn't be such a silent struggle. We should all learn to talk more about things. So as yesterday, my entire video was pretty much me blabbing about my day and venting and none of the kids, which this is supposed to be a family vlog, but let's just get real. <laughs> it's gonna have a little bit of everything because I'm lazy and this is enough for me. So I've been struggling really bad lately with like confidence and it's so crazy because in the last nine months I've lost close to 95 pounds and I never felt horrible about my size before. I never felt like I was such a big girl. Like I knew I was bigger, but I never thought, oh, people are looking at my way. Oh, I was never embarrassed shopping. And it's so strange now because as I get smaller shopping and I feel like everyone's staring at me. I feel like people are like, what is this girl doing in the small section? Because I still feel like I'm in my bigger body and I still feel like I should be getting bigger clothes. And sometimes I even do that. I go in the bigger section and I'm looking in, and then I go to try things on and they're so big. I'm so sorry. Just like silence that. And then I have to go back and I have to go get small things and I feel so silly in the stores where they look at your clothes and make sure that you're not lying about how many you have and they see these tiny clothes that I'm handing them and I feel like they're staring at me like why are you getting these small clothes like what are you doing you're gonna stretch out our clothes it's just a constant battle for me the point is I know that we all struggle with self-doubt and um, we sit here and pity ourselves and really we just need to step up and love ourselves and even now I'm sitting here comparing myself because my third favorite thing to do is sit and watch youtubers I in all kinds of different you know subscriptions that I have to different people that have these amazing huge houses and they sit here and they film their talks and they have an amazing background and they're so organized and well put together and I'm like my background is literally you know it is what it is we can't all be perfect I actually made my YouTube account because I wanted to show people that you can have a happy, super awesome life with an amazing, loving, happy family in a tiny one bedroom house. I have a family of four and two dogs and sometimes three dogs and we make it work. You have So anyways, what I have for step one in making yourself feel better about yourself and growing your own confidence is to actually take care of yourself. I have so many friends that are like, oh, I feel so tired, so unhealthy. I am in the worst shape I've ever been in. But what are you doing to change that? And then they go and they eat their McDonald's for lunch. So, like I said, step one, take care of yourself. Eat a salad. Have a protein shake. Go for a long walk. These are things that are also going to help your anxiety. For me, I have to to do some yoga, even if it's not real life yoga because I am horrible and a beginner. Sit down and stretch out your legs and your back and everything else, like listen to your body. Go for a walk and clear your mind on top of getting your heart rate going and moving and maybe hopefully working up a little bit of a sweat. You have to take care of yourself or you're not gonna love yourself. Step two, maybe spoil yourself a little bit. I mean, I understand that not everyone has money. My favorite store is Ross. Like $8 for a cute new top. You're gonna sit there and you're gonna compare yourself to other people regardless. You have to try not to though. For me, I love looking at people's clothes and I'm like, dang, I wish I had cute clothes. Go pick something up. It's okay to treat yourself here and there as long as you're not spending money you don't have or spending so much money that you can't get your kids lunch 
Did I order Bonnie's lunch today? Take care of yourself. It's not always about the people that are around you. You need to treat yourself too. I love spoiling other people. If it's Carlos's birthday or Christmas or Valentine's Day, anything else. If I have the money, I'm going to get him everything I can. So give yourself a break and get yourself a treat. Stop worrying about other people. And that sounds so selfish, but you have to be selfish. Be selfish for a day. Take care of yourself. It, and I don't mean like eating healthy and exercising. I mean, do something that you like to do. I like to go shopping. I like to read. So sometimes, even when I'm off work, Jude will go to daycare and I will have a quiet house and I will just read my book. Okay, like that's what I want to do. That's what's going to make me happy and make me feel better. Read a dang book. Do what you want to do. Take your kids to daycare and don't let yourself feel bad about it because you're off and you should be spending time with them. You'll be off again. I'm sure. Okay, we're fine. The kids are fine. They might miss you for a few hours, even if it's only for like two hours. I'm just gonna keep repeating it. Just take care of yourself. Be selfish. Everyone else is gonna be okay, I promise you. Step three, and this might sound so silly, but something I really like to do is I will write down, as if I am not myself, things that I like about myself. I love that I am such a forgiving person. I love that I am, sometimes it might not show on my face, but I'm a really nice person. I, I know that my friends can always come to me and I'm always going to be able to be there for them. If I don't give the best advice, I at least give a great listening ear. <laughs> I am not great at giving advice, but I do try. Don't uh, take my own advice, but I still, I still give it. So anyways, I will write down everything that I like about myself. Mentally, physically, emotionally, I have all these attachments to myself. I love that I lost so much weight. That sounds really stupid, but you know, you have to find the things that you love about yourself. I like my eyes. I like that my teeth aren't too crooked. Stop. Stop. I like that I am able to teach my children about God and fearing God, but also trusting Him, and that my daughter knows when she's scared, she asks me, can we pray? I, I taught her that, right? I mean, yeah, church too. But I am so grateful that I could mold my children into these people that are completely different than I was when I was a child. And then I will read it back as if I am not myself. Almost as if I'm reading about this woman and I'm like, wow, I really want to be like her. Okay, but it's me. Like, that sounds silly. It sounds stupid. But seriously, sit down and try it. Write everything you love about yourself, everything you love about yourself, not the things you want to change about yourself, not the things that you wish that you were or that you had. Write down what you love about yourself. There has to be five things. Even if they sound stupid, like mine probably sounds super stupid, but to me, they mean everything. And then read it to yourself as if you're reading about some girl that you are fantasizing in your mind be like, wow, she is amazing. You don't know about her problems. You don't know about her self-doubts or her fears or anything. And that's my phone. That writing, that paper, that page is going to mean so much to you. And you're going to, it makes me emotional because I feel like this is coming out sounding really stupid, but it's going to change your mindset. It might not work the first time, but do it every few days and try to find something new every time and add another thing to the list and you're gonna really start to love yourself. Number four, we have to stop comparing ourselves to others. And I feel like it's something that automatically comes to us as humans, like looking at someone and be like, oh my God, that's so cool, they're so awesome, like I wanna do that. I look at people's pictures all the time and their travel vlogs and things and I'm like, why can't I freaking do that? Like, why can't I go see amazing things? I know why, I'm a mom. And I'm not saying that moms can't do that, or anything but you know our priorities are just a little different right now because we're trying to get a house and you know traveling is just not in our near future which is fine you have to stop comparing yourself to others I think that when we compare we often bring ourselves down or we try to bring that person down to make ourselves feel better like oh she's got this but she don't got this or she looks kind of funny or you know just thinking of different things to make that person lesser 
because we're trying to make ourselves feel better. We need to bring each other up as women. There are different body types. There are different, you know, ways that people talk. There are different... People do their makeup differently and people don't do their makeup at all and we are all constantly hearing judgment and like why did so and so gain so much weight? How come so and so treats her kids this way? And you know, we all do things differently. Everyone is different. We have to stop the comparison because all we're doing is lessering ourselves and making ourselves feel worse than what we need to feel. How are we ever supposed to feel good about ourselves if we can't feel good about other people and bring other people up? As soon as I have a bad thought about someone in my head, which I'm not saying I don't, I do, I'll look at people's pictures and I won't go negatively. Or I'll have a bad dream and I'll wake up and I'll feel negative about that person. As soon as I do that, I stop and <laughs> this might not like suit everyone. I am fairly religious. I stop and I pray. And I ask God to take those bad thoughts away. If you are not, you know, a prayer or you don't believe in God, you need to send those vibes into the universe or whatever it is you believe in stop and remind yourself that they are a person just trying to live their life and they're probably struggling with self-doubt and you know things like that as well so why are you going to bring them down what do you like about that person what can you change about your mindset to make you nicer we worry about what other people think and how can you sit there and worry about it if you're not thinking nicely yourself and that's kind of off subject that could be like four and five put together maybe stop comparing yourself to someone else and then stop thinking badly about anyone else and I know that's not just gonna happen you're not just gonna be like oh I'll never have a bad thought again but try to catch yourself when you are thinking or speaking badly of someone else and try to think about the struggles they might be going through and then force yourself to think of things that you like about that person and change your mindset because the universe is going to bring negativity to you if you are putting negativity on someone else. So just think about that for a minute, okay? Every time you start thinking badly of someone, make yourself think of three good things about them. And every time you start comparing yourself to someone, think about three things you love about yourself and about your situation or whatever it is. If I'm comparing myself to these other YouTubers that have amazing lighting and their awesome backgrounds in their videos and I'm like, ugh, I don't have those lights and I don't have windows all over this room or any room because I have a tiny house and I have an ugly background and my dogs are always freaking licking themselves right next to me in my videos. But I found the confidence and the drive to start a YouTube channel even if I don't have the surroundings quite yet. I have posted several videos to try to work on <laughs> getting better. And you know what? I have a house to live in and some people don't. See, this is something I'm working on too, but I think I'm making a good point. Okay? Okay. Let's just let's just move on. Let's just carry on. Last and final tip is going to sound so corny, just to stay positive. <laughs> For example, I am, I super, like, I wear my heart on my sleeve. I take things super personal, and I am just working really hard not to do that. So today, I was in line at Starbucks, like, in the drive through line. And at our Starbucks, it could go either way, and then you have to go in. And I knew that I was after the guy in front of me. And obviously, I knew that. Okay, but there was a person on the other side, and I knew that I was before him because I had seen someone leave before him and then him pull up when I had already been waiting there. And I start driving in because I know it's my turn. And he gets super mad honks and then speeds away out of line completely because he was so mad that I was going first. And if this was the Martha from like six months ago, I would still be sitting here like really dwelling on that and being like, I cannot believe I ruined that guy's day. Why was he so mad at me? I am so upset. Like, I am so upset. I cannot believe 
that someone honked at me. I can't believe that he was so mad at me. I didn't even do anything. And I would seriously sit here and think about all the bad things. And now, the person I am today, like, it still got me for a few minutes. And I was like, what is his problem? I didn't do anything. If I knew he was going to get so upset, I would have just let him go first. I wasn't in a huge hurry. I don't have work until, like, another hour. And I just... It didn't have to be such a big deal. It was just one more car. But I was next, so I didn't think that he was going to get so mad. I guess he didn't realize that I had been there because the car in front of me was a lot bigger, so maybe he didn't see my car there, but I was there. Truly not my fault if you didn't know that I was next. But I would have let him go if I knew that it was going to be handled. Anyway, see? Here I am starting to dwell on it again. So instead, I let myself think about it for a minute. And then I'm like, you know what? It's really not my fault. It's not my fault. I didn't do anything wrong. Even if I had, like people make mistakes. <sighs> that was not a fun thing that happened, having someone honk and yell at me. And I wish it hadn't happened. And that's it. My day will get better. My day will go on. I'm going to stay positive about it. And that's all. See, when things like that used to happen to me, I would let it ruin my entire day and I would seriously think about it and I would tell everyone about it and I would bring that negative feeling more into my life and more bad things would happen because I was being so negative about it and thinking, you know, thinking so much about it. And like I've already mentioned, I'm super into the law of attraction. I'm super into bringing your own, you know, bringing your own karma into the universe. and manifesting your own happiness your own you know manifesting money or happy thoughts or you know good relationships that when something bad like that happens and you sit there and you dwell on it and you wonder why it happened and how it could have happened differently just don't my friends always make fun of me because they'll be like oh i'm so tired and i'll just sit there and I'll be like just don't be and they're like, oh, okay, just don't be. But that's exactly all it is. Oh, I feel so sad today. Just don't be. And I don't want to sound insensitive. I suffer from mental illness. I have horrible anxiety. I have horrible depression sometimes, as I showed you last week and some of my videos. And, you know, you can do these things and try to make yourself feel better. And sometimes it's not that easy. And I know that. I was medicated for years and years, ever since I was in seventh grade. I have had horrible mood disorders. And it wasn't until about three years ago that I got off everything. And I'm still off everything. And I'm not saying I don't have my downfalls or my down days or thing or days when I just can't get out of that mindset. But you really have to try because life is not long enough to take full on days or even weeks and just dwell on things. Now, this is like an emotional subject and this is kind of hard for me to talk about because I've had because I've had a few friends that have taken their own lives. And this isn't something that I ever talk about. But I tried to take my own life at one point. And, and I look back on that and I, I don't feel so much disgusted as much as I just feel so sad that I felt like there was no way out. And I just wanted to get to the next thing from here. I didn't want to be here anymore. And I am so glad that I knew that within minutes before anything happened. I believe that I was lucky enough to take something that wasn't going to ruin things and take away my life. But I still get sad thinking about I couldn't, I couldn't find a light in that darkness at that time. And I get upset thinking about, you know, there's a lot of people that don't find that light before they try to do something like that. Something. So the whole point is just stay positive. Ugh, I'm in such a bad mood today. My mom pissed me off. Just don't be. <laughs> 
and I'm not taking it lightly. I know that people get depressed. I know that we get anxious. I know, you know, sometimes we have horrible mood swings. Sometimes I get really mean, like mean around that time of the month. And I don't, and I could feel myself being mean and I feel my chest like tightening up. Like I just, ugh. but you know, sometimes you really like, you feel like you can't help it, but you need to sit back and you need to think about the positive things. You need to bring in some positive energy. I might feel like this right now, but let me just take a second. Let me just realize what I have that is amazing in my life, that I have an amazing life, you know, and who knows, who really knows what's going to come after this. Like I've already said, I'm religious. I believe that this life leads to another one and maybe that's why back then I wanted this one to end so I could just go and be at my permanent home and be where I could be happy. But you have to be lighthearted. You have to enjoy this life. You have to, you know, we're going to be here for as long as God wants us to be here. And whether it's, you know, some, was there really a point to all of this? How many lives did I change? How many people did I help? If you're being negative and you're bringing negative energy into your life and you're making the universe around you negative and you are not making things okay, what are you taking from it? Don't, wouldn't you rather help people? Wouldn't you rather be that person that everyone wants to go to and everyone wants to put trust into because you know how to just flip that switch and I'm not saying that you can always do that I don't always do that but you can try I got really upset when that person flipped me the bird in line at Starbucks over a small cup of coffee that they were waiting for but what am I really gonna do about that you know what I'm sorry that I went before you <laughs> that's it though what am I going to do? I can't go back in time. I can't make you happy about it. I'm sorry if you were grumpy because you hadn't had your coffee. But that's it. I'm not going to let it bug me anymore. And that's just kind of how it is with everything. <laughs> but really, I was working myself up over pain when I could have just let it pass. Some people understand mental illness and some people think that we are crazy. <laughs> And I'm not saying it's a joke, but sometimes we just got to take it as a joke. We got to take it lightheartedly. We got to be positive about it. Okay, you don't understand? That's okay. I know what's wrong with me. <laughs> but also, we have to stay positive. Because if we're going to bring ourselves down, we're going to make it worse. We're going to think we need medication when, in reality, most of it is just going to turn you into a zombie and turn you, in you into what you're not. Take a second. Take a few deep breaths. Just don't be. That's it. Just don't be. <laughs> you know, give it a few minutes. Let yourself be upset for a minute. But then get over it. So if you're sad, or if you're bored, or if you are angry, just take a few deep breaths. Turn it into something positive. Just don't be. Physically, it's so funny. My boss and I, this is the last thing I'm going to say. I know I keep going off on things that aren't even like this last step. My boss and I, we always laugh because if we are grumpy at work, we have this thing where we feel like if we physically smile, like <laughs> it literally turns your mood around and we'll be grumpy and we'll sit there and we'll be cutting, you know, we'll be cutting this men's hair together because we stand next to each other. We'll look at each other. We'll be like, and then we'll both like look back at the haircut and we'll just be like, and look at each other and smile and we'll just keep smiling and then we just start laughing and everything's better <laughs> it literally works if you are upset just don't be if you have something to be upset about then you know that's probably one thing but if not then just don't be anyways i really hope that you enjoyed this video i hope that it helped you i know that it's not a whole lot of tips and tricks or anything but I don't have a whole lot of time, and I didn't really plan this. I was like, huh, solve my camera. This is how I've been feeling. I'll be able to talk about it type of thing. I hope that you're having a good Thursday, though, and I will see you in tomorrow's video. Bye!